Hi, I'm Jason, and in this Tech Tips video, we'll be talking about how encoders work. There are different kinds of encoders out there. There's optical, there's magnetic, there's absolute, there's relative. But in this video, we'll be talking about relative quadrature encoders that use a magnetic sensor, the kind that you'll find on the motors that we sell on servocity.com. Relative encoders are more cost effective, they're more common, and they're easier to work with as compared to absolute encoders. An absolute encoder will always know exactly what angle it's at, even when your program first boots up. Uh, whereas a relative encoder can only tell you how far the shaft has turned since it started monitoring the data. The reason they're called encoders is because they're translating that physical movement of the shaft into a series of signals or a code. This code is similar to a Morse code or the PWM signal that's used to control a servo. If you're using a program on a microcomputer or microcontroller, you can listen to these uh, series of pulses coming in and translate that into usable information or decode it. I've built this demo rig to help visualize that code. Like any quadrature encoder, this demo rig has two sensors. Each sensor uh, is referred to as a channel, channels A and B. Each channel is going to have two states, a high state and a low state. The green LED will indicate the state of channel A, while the yellow LED will indicate the state of channel B. And just like the quadrature encoders on our motors, these are Hall effect sensors that sense the presence of a magnetic field. When the magnetic field comes within range of the sensor, the sensor on that channel goes high, and when it goes out of range, it goes low. Each state transition from low to high is called a rise, and from high to low is called a fall. You can count just the rises, or just the falls, or just one channel, etc. But if you're counting the rises and the falls of both channel A and channel B, you're in what's known as 4x mode. And this is where the quad and quadrature comes from. All four countable events in sequence is known as a cycle. Once you know how many cycles there are in one full rotation of the shaft, you'll be able to start using the data from the encoder to determine useful information like speed, direction of travel, and distance traveled. Since I have four magnets on this particular rig, I'm going to have four cycles for one rotation of the shaft. Since each cycle has four countable events, I'll have 16 countable events for one rotation of the shaft on this demo rig. Now bear in mind, this is equivalent to what's happening on the back of the motor, directly off the motor's shaft. If your motor is geared down, you'll have to take the gear ratio into account. For example, um, if this is 16 countable events in a single rotation on the motor shaft, and then you gear that down 100 times with a 100 to 1 ratio, then you're going to have 1,600 countable events for one rotation of the output shaft. Now that you know how many countable events to expect for a single rotation of the shaft, you can start using some of that uh, data from the encoder. Let's take a look at some example programs that I've uh, preloaded onto the board here. In this first example, you'll see as I physically rotate the shaft, you're going to start to see data come through on the serial monitor. Um, this is telling you exactly how many RPMs it's spinning. In this second example, I'm simply displaying a count of the countable events from the encoder. If I take and rotate this exactly one time, you should expect to see 16 show up. But I can also rotate it the other way around and it will decrement that count. So you might be wondering, how does it know what direction it's rotating if it's just counting pulses coming in off the encoder? And this is one of the really clever things about how a quadrature encoder works. The two sensors on a quadrature encoder are 90 degrees out of phase. And essentially, this means that of the two states each sensor has, those two states are always going to be half a state apart. So you can see, as I start to rotate the rig, in the clockwise direction, first, channel A lights up because it's within range before channel B is within range. As I continue to rotate, channel B goes high right as channel A is halfway through its high state. As I continue to rotate again, channel A turns off when channel B is halfway through its high state. And thus you can tell what direction it's turning because 
if you're rotating in a clockwise direction on this rig, A is always going to lead B, and if you rotate in a counterclockwise direction, B is going to always lead channel A. So you can see in my demo rig, I've bent the sensors uh, for channels A and B. One is now clockwise biased, and the other is counterclockwise biased. And this is why the magnet will always hit one first in, in one direction and the other one first when it's spinning in the other direction. And that's actually how you get the out of phase um, needed to, to measure what direction you're going in. It actually has nothing to do with the fact that this is mounted in such a way that they look like they're 90 degrees apart from each other. I could have just as easily gone straight across from each other as long as I have those sensors bent in, in that way. So that essentially summarizes the basics of how magnetic quadrature relative encoders work. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at tech at servocity.com. And if you're curious to see the code that I used for the examples, we'll post a link to it in the show notes.